Although the number one, two, and three causes of shock or instability in the trauma bay are due to bleeding, bleeding, and bleeding, there is one specific form of shock or clinical condition in which the early administration of crystalloids over blood products would be preferred. Do you know what that condition is? If you answered neurogenic shock, you're absolutely correct. This is a form of distributive shock which may be seen in patients who sustain spinal cord injuries typically involving the cervical spinal cord or the thoracic spinal cord typically above the level of T6. The pathophysiology responsible for neurogenic shock really relates to the fact that the descending cervical and thoracic sympathetic pathways or fibers that would normally innervate your blood vessels and provide adrenergic tone or increased systemic vascular resistance or SVR are completely abolished. Remember that shock really just refers to the inadequate delivery of oxygen to critical tissues and cells. As a result, we flip from the normally ATP productive aerobic glycolysis to anaerobic glycolysis, which results in the accumulation of metabolic waste products. Neurogenic shock is truly a distributive form of shock because of the decrease in the SVR. Remember, your MAP is equal to your cardiac output times your SVR. And if your SVR is down, the only way you'll maintain your MAP is by increasing your cardiac output, which is a function of your heart rate times your stroke volume. And your stroke volume is determined by your preload, your contractility, and afterload. And herein lays one of the major problems for patients in neurogenic shock. Because those descending sympathetic fibers have been cut off, there is no reflex tachycardia to compensate for the decrease in SVR. In fact, many of these patients will be bradycardic. And before we move on to the clinical recognition as well as institution of immediately life-saving therapies in patients with neurogenic shock, I do want to clarify terms or terminology. Spinal shock is not the same as neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock is a form of distributive shock, similar to anaphylaxis, patients who come in with SERS slash sepsis, or an Addisonian crisis. Spinal shock is really a misnomer. It refers to the absence of sensation motor and reflexes below the level of an injury and may be variable in terms of duration, but it has nothing to do with the delivery of oxygen and so is not shock. In the U.S. annually, approximately 12,000 patients may sustain a spinal cord injury, and these injuries can be devastating and are life-altering. Among patients with high cervical spinal cord injuries, anywhere from about 15 to 30 percent of patients may manifest symptoms and signs consistent with neurogenic shock. Unlike trauma patients who are in hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock, patients in neurogenic shock oftentimes because they're vasodilated are very warm with extremely brisk cap refill on exam. Furthermore, these patients may be hypotensive as well as bradycardic. And although neurogenic shock is a form of distributive shock, it helps to think of it like a relative hypovolemia. The capacitance of the venous system and circulation are increased, so these patients have a relative hypovolemia. The first thing you want to do in these patients is tank them up, typically starting with crystalloids. Once your first or second liter of crystalloids have been banged in, if the patient remains hypotensive, that's when you want to start thinking about vasopressor support. The ideal vasopressor in this situation, you could argue, would be norepinephrine or something that has not just alpha, but also some beta activity. Outside of any interventions that need to be performed to stabilize the spine, most patients with spinal cord injuries will come to the ICU for MAP therapy, typically targeting a MAP of 85 millimeters of mercury for approximately seven days. The whole concept behind MAP therapy is similar to what we do in the ICU for patients who have a traumatic or severe traumatic brain injury, namely targeting a CPP or cerebral perfusion pressure. In the case of the spinal cord, we're targeting a spinal cord perfusion pressure, which is equal to your MAP minus your CSF pressure. With that said, in this 2021 study in the Journal of Spinal Cord Medicine, the authors identified eight studies that met their inclusion criteria, of which only one was a randomized controlled trial. Unfortunately, the literature and data supporting MAP therapy is quite variable and heterogeneous. There are very limited sample sizes, and we don't know what the ideal vasopressor is, what the ideal target is, or the ideal duration. Obviously, a lot more work needs to be done with regards to the management of patients with traumatic spinal cord injuries. What are you doing at your centers? Have you seen a patient in neurogenic shock? Be sure to like and follow for more.